Okay, I am just going to show you very briefly that the standard model didn't really work. And they say it didn't work and that there would be additional phenomena exist. And the phenomena may be discovered in particle physics in the near future. They, was hoping, they were hoping that Fermilab would see these particles. And they actually did, but Don Lincoln didn't realize what he saw. He wrote about them. Let me just show you what he wrote about, and I'll show you what we found. And they're the same particles. Okay, we're going to get into all of these particles. This is all from the experiments that I did with Rod Warren. Now, this is the particles that Fermilab, Don Lincoln, found. This goes back to the same time, about close to 10 years ago. And we also found them, but we found them in light experiments. They saw them in experiments from protons, which means gigantic particles just smashing into bits everywhere. And they could see these particles, and they said, these are the smallest ones we could find. And they didn't, couldn't really say much about them because they were just one they'd find here and one they'd find here and they'd find some over here and some over here. They just had no idea where they came from or how they were configured or any of that stuff. But they called them, they ended up calling them muon neutrinos and electron neutrinos. This one's a fixed particle. This is a point particle. I'll show you Don Lincoln's article in a second. This is what we found in light experiments. We didn't use protons. We used light. And we focused it through a Venturi, so we really got the best of everything you can get just using light. You can see the light is ex it's accelerating and then it exploded at the Venturi. And at the Venturi is where you, we created the sterile muons and the electron showers from the Dirac neutrino, which is the black and white neutrinos. They separated here. So this is pretty serious stuff. Okay, so this came out about the standard model not being correct. And then we have Don Lincoln posting here from Fermilab. This is also way back, 2013. That's nine years ago. And these are the particles. They're the ones that we found. Now, he's just he's explaining that the standard model shows point-like particles and fixed particles. He's found them, but... I'm not sure they really understand them within the standard model. And he talks about quantum foam. And that is what exists in space. They call it a quantum foam. And all it is is the light particles, which I just showed you, those little black and white particles. They're everywhere because as light goes and it goes and goes. Now, the only reason we don't see it in space is because they're not close enough to each other to bang and glow. When I show you how they bang and glow, whenever, whenever one pushes through the fields of another, they both glow. The one that's pushing hard is the pusher, and it glows like crazy. The one that's shoving back is a shover, and it doesn't glow as much, and it gets pushed out of the way. The pusher goes through, the shover gets shoved out. Okay, so this is Don's article again. Let's just go, you see the, the extended particle which is the fixed and the point particle, which is, has no mass. That one has all the mass. And he, he, I'm surprised he didn't understand because I showed him these same particles and how we developed them. Now, he's saying that they'll eventually find that the particles we thought were point-like are actually extended particles with smaller things inside of them, yes. However, because the core particle is surrounded by this extended cloud of whiteness, Determining whether the core is point-like or extended is a real challenge. We've never seen the core. It's dark matter. I'll show you that. In summary, extended particles have a fixed size. They're just a one big bowling ball. Although they may have a fuzzy edge, but they're still one size fits all. The point-like particles are mathematical abstractions, and they have, he's saying, zero size. There must be something there. But he says, even with the zero size particles, they have an extended effect due to the field that surrounds them. So it has, so if something surrounds something, it's, there's something in the middle, so it can't be zero. But it's very small. I calculated it out to be about 95 plus percent is in the fixed particle. And the rest is the point particle, just barely there. And... Um, and he says, in summary, well, I just showed you that they have an extended field. Now, then he's asking for questions. And I did work back and forth with Don quite a bit, actually. And um, um, it didn't go quite as well as I had hoped for. 
Um, and he does talk about the quantum phone. Now, let's look into the quantum phone, because that's where they're missing a lot. Okay, this is Don Lincoln again, and he's talking about the quantum foam, which is literally light particles. He's saying modern physics deals with some ridiculously non-intuitive stuff. Objects act as though they gain mass the faster they move. An electron can't decide if it's a particle, a wave, or both. I can explain that quite easily. However, there is one statement that takes the cake on sounding like crazy talk. Empty space isn't empty. Then he goes on to describe what's going on there. They really don't know, but they know that there's what they call a quantum foam. So he gets down to here, he says, the quantum foam is real. It just completely saturates the universe. The microcosm is in continual motion. Scientist J.B.S. Heldale, a, a for, aphorism is true. The universe is not only stranger than we imagine, it is stranger than we can imagine. I have found out that to be a fact. People cannot accept what they see. Now here we are again, Don Lincoln, do you have a question? Do you want something answered? Do you want to interact? And I did all of those and again, did not work out well. Now you heard Don, Don say light doesn't know whether it's a particle or a wave. Well it is both and it's because it is a magnetic particle which has a magnetic field around it. So the particle is tiny, the field is large. As the particle moves forward, the field is in front of it and pushes all of these away. So this is the pusher, these try to shove back and they get thrown out of the way, the pusher comes through. This is why you have a wave and a particle. The particle is here. The wave has to come with it because it's a magnetic particle. Okay, this is um, from the experiments I did with Rodney Warren in uh, Australia. And this goes back a very long time. Uh, these were the particles Don Lincoln found, and they, we found exactly the same particles. We found them in light, and back to back, they make up what is now called a gluon, which is really just what we always thought was an electron. You, nobody's ever seen a dark particle. Just like you said, the surrounding particles are the white particles. You can't see the core. The core is the dark. And I'll show you that because the Russians found it exactly that way in space. You have to get out of gravity. Once you have gravity, this crushes everything down and you have a flat amount of, of white particles surrounding dark. We don't see the dark because it's down. All we can see is the white. I'll show you that in a second. These are the particles we found, and we accelerated light, which you're not supposed to be able to do, and it's not that hard to do. And, um, and then at that point, we broke apart the white and the black and created exactly what they're trying to do, is the muon, sterile muon, and electron showers. That's what they're hoping to do at Fermilab. But they're just seeing it in debris. We actually have it focusable, and we can squirt that stuff onto a substrate. If there's energy here, we should be able to harvest it quite easily on that substrate. All right, let me point out a couple of things. This was our experiment showing the particles, the black and the white. This shows them in colorized. This is red, but they come in green. They come in blue. It's the exact same particle. It's just more energy. And I, can, I show that somewhere in here. I have a green and a blue coming together at the same time. Now, the, this is what I showed Don Lincoln from the Russians. This goes back to, I think, 2015, I believe. And um, I said, Don, they found the dark particles separated from the white particles in space. They freaked out. They said they, they contacted the Earth guys. They couldn't believe it either. They, were, they, they just absolutely freaked out. One guy from Max Planck locked himself in his office for three weeks <laughs> trying to figure out what he saw. They still can't figure it out. I know exactly what it is, but you have to understand dipole electron flood theory before you can understand how they can separate. They have no clue whatsoever what they're looking at now. But once you understand dipole flood, you know that the particles can separate and become, the black can be separated from the white. Here it is right here, the black and the white separated. In space, they don't snap back together, they sort of drift apart. So all you ever see is the white surrounding the black. That's why they've never seen the dark matter before. It's, it's attached to the white matter, it's the stuff that we can see, it's the glowy stuff. Okay, these are two Dirac neutrinos. They don't go sideways though, they go up and down with the plane of the Earth. 
each one of these is separate. So it's not one of these and one of these. It's one of these and one of these. And that's an absolute fact. They always go straight against the, the, the attraction of the earth. Because the earth is an attractive source. It's loaded with this dark matter. The dark matter wants to absorb this white matter back and collect it around itself. Just like we saw the Russians in space. They showed exactly that happening. All right, that's what happens. When you have the white particles, they will collect around the dark matter. So that's what we have is a dark matter earth with the white particles holding onto it. And that's what we see. So we never knew the dark matter was there. I, I know, it's just like Don said, it's crazier than anybody can even imagine. We found all of this stuff. And here's the real key. Here's the problem. A new scientific truth does not triumph by convincing opponents and making them see the light, but rather because its opponents eventually die off and a new generation grows up that is familiar with it, the truth. That's Max Planck. This is the way we crushed our fields, and all it is is you're crushing fields against fields. If you hit head-on, yes, and they're perfectly head-on, they will spit out all these particles but rarely do you uh, will they hit head-on they'll skirt away from each other now they did just redesign it to focus just like we did i told fermi lab and cern i said you got to focus you're just sending particles around and not focusing they did they shut down and made it focus and then they actually also added cmos only so that they didn't interfere with the magnetic fields before they were using different types of of um receivers to see magnetically what's happening and at the same time they destroyed everything because they it's called the observer effect <laughs> they put in these magnetic receivers and it just destroys all the magnetic fields we only use cmos that's what they're doing now they 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 reconverted to do the focusing like we do and to use the cmos like we do exactly what i told uh, university of geneva when i went there for particle physics years ago i said you got to focus you got to use CMOS. You guys are interfering with the fields. You're causing the observer effect. You're never going to get anywhere. And then I just went on my way. <laughs> now, here's what CERN does in Fermilab. They take these huge particles. They smash them together. And again, this all the white stuff is on the outside. The black is on the inside. They never saw the black ever. They never even knew it was there. But when they hit together, they see the black ones going off and the white ones. And it's just a bigger mess. And what they see is those two little particles, the black and the white ones. They say, these are the smallest ones we can find. But we find it in a ball of trash, they found it. We squirt it and see the black separate from the white. So I would say that we're a little bit ahead of CERN and Fermilab, to be perfectly honest with you. I know it sounds very arrogant, but it's, um, but it's true. <laughs> okay, I, this is where I mentioned that to Don Lincoln at Fermilab that they should make them focus and sure enough US collaborators will contribute 16 magnets to dramatically focus the LHC near light speed particle beams to a tiny volume before colliding they focus them in together before they were just sort of passing by I said you gotta focus them they did that I, I don't know if they did it because of me but I told Don I said you guys, that's what you guys should be doing see right here CMOS detector system developments for the LHC detector. The work focuses on the design and integration of novel radiation hard monolithic CMOS pixel sensors to track these particles. Well, that's what we use as CMOS, but we don't have to have it hardened because we're using light. They're using protons, which are big chunks of huge things compared to ours. They're 1,823 times bigger than the particles we're using. So, yes, they're going to they're gonna damage things when they're hitting these things head on and making these explosions. We're squirting it through the detector. We didn't have any trouble. It didn't seem to cause any problem even to the cell phones. It didn't, didn't cause any problems that we could find. So here they are using the CMOS, as I said they would. You saw we can accelerate light, we can divide light, that's fission, that's fusion. I think we can get some serious energy here. If somebody could just get the hold of Don Lincoln and ask him to reconsider this, because this might be able to actually be portable, carry it around, very, very simple device. Cheap, 
portable, no grid required. If it works, I don't know. I don't know if it'll work or not. That's Don's department. But somebody's going to have to try to find somebody to look into this because I can't find anybody. And it's been years and years and years now, so I've kind of burnt a lot of bridges because I sort of got a little nasty after a while. And uh, now I'm sort of sitting here by myself. So if you can help, please help.